The E-doubling may be the most common embellishment in the Highland Bagpipe universe, and it's not the easiest to pull off. But fear not, with the exercises we have here, we're going to definitely do our best to improve yours. In the description below, there's a link to the PDF document we have here, so go ahead, print that out, put it on a tablet, have it in front of you so you can follow along. This exercise only has three notes, F, E, and D, and two grace notes, the G grace note and the F grace note, but with these tools, we have everything we need to start improving your E-doubling. In the first measure of this exercise, we just have notes with no grace notes. The idea here is to make sure that we can make the note changes cleanly and clearly with no grace notes involved before we start. F down to E is relatively simple. That one is lowering one finger. Not much can go wrong there. However, E to D is a chance for a big crossing noise. That would be what occurs if either of these fingers or both of them together come down before these have gotten out of the way. But sometimes it's even just this one pointer finger on the bottom dragging, which can sound kind of cool, but isn't right. We want it nice and clean. We want right as these are lifting off, the pointer, middle, and ring on the bottom, that only then are the ring finger and pinky coming down. You might want to think of the fingers overlapping one another about a centimeter above the chanter. So from E down to D, when you're about a centimeter off is where that point of intersection would happen so that there is a moment in time and space where none of the fingers from this middle finger down are on the chanter. We need to have kind of an anti-crossing noise moment. It's just a split second, but we want to make sure that we don't hear that low clunky noise. And then the same thing going back up, we have to make sure that these, the ring finger on top, pinky on bottom, come up before these three come back down, or again, chance for that crossing noise. Uh -uh. We also don't want it too lazy, however. You really can hear these three fingers coming up and down, so we want to try to minimize that sound by trying to get as close as we can to a crossing noise, but still not having one. That split second, almost like a grace note sized anti-crossing noise between them. Let's try that first measure now. I have a metronome here set to 72. Set it for wherever you need, or if you're just starting with this ornament, perhaps no metronome at all, and really focusing on avoiding those crossing noises. Just bar one, a couple times around. I wanted to give a special shout out to all the members of my Patreon community. They really do make this channel possible. I'd love to add your name to this list. The support means everything. Thank you guys. Now let's add the G grace note to this ornament. So from F, we're gonna do a G grace note change down to E. In many ways, we could call this an E singling because we're emphasizing one single E. In any doubling, be it E doubling, C doubling, low A doubling, that initial G grace note is the most important part of the doubling, even if it's not what makes it a doubling. The whole point of a doubling is to emphasize the note, and the G grace note is doing most of the work in that. Repeating that note quickly with another grace note is going to allow that note to punch through even more. So from E, G grace note to F, it's gonna be one up and both down, but remember we want a nice, small, crisp motion. And not. The grace note itself needs to be nice and small. And when we're lowering, it's both down at the same time. We don't want the middle finger down first and then this one down. You can really hear that sound. So one up, both down smartly together. From here, we're making that switch down to D and back up to E with the G grace note. So we've already worked on this change sans grace note. Now we're gonna add a quick movement of that top pointer finger. So it raises along with the ring finger and pinky on the bottom, and then crisply and cleanly, it comes down with the bottom three. So we have three fingers coming up, four fingers coming down. This one might take a little while to build it up to be crisp and clean. At first, if you need to take some more time, by all means,
When you've sorted out how to make those G grace notes cleanly and crisply on those E's, go ahead, stick that metronome on and try to give it a go. I'm gonna do the second bar on repeat a few times. If you want a more personalized instruction, please reach out to me at the email you see down here or head to www.commandyourbagpipe.com and we'll get you going. I'm working with folks from all over the planet and hope to work with you soon. So while the G grace note is absolutely critical to a good, clean, crisp E doubling, we're going to take a moment now and take it out and focus on that F grace note. Before we even move into the next bar of music, I want to just spend a little bit of time right here doing F grace notes on E. And I want to make sure that that F grace note is good, crisp, clean, and accurate, nice and small, and not big and bloopy. And not. It's got to come down with some force, and we don't want it very high. I'm not pinching the chanter with my fingers as much as I'm controlling the height and trying to make sure it's coming down with a crisp little smack, like I'm kind of squishing a little ant. So in this exercise, we're going to start on F, make a good clean change to E, no G grace note, so we can focus on that F. Then we're going to separate that E equally into two parts this time with an F grace note before heading down to a D, back up to E with no crossing noise, but also no G grace note, and then throwing in another good crisp F grace note, separating that E into two equal parts. Let's give it a go. When you have that under your fingers, you're ready to move on to the next measure. In this fourth measure, we're just combining what we did in measures two and three. We're going to start on F going down to E with a G grace note, separating that E into half with an F grace note, switching down to D cleanly without anything, back up with a G grace note to E, and separating that E again with an F grace note. It's kind of an open E doubling, if you will, but try to make sure as best you can to keep those two E's good clean and even. I'm actually going to slow the metronome down just a hair to make sure that we can make sure we're hitting two good, clean, even E's separated by a crispy small F. Now we're getting into the more advanced levels of this exercise. We're taking the G grace note out, but instead of separating the E's evenly, we're gonna hit that E and then basically as soon as we've heard it sound, we're gonna separate it in to a second E with an F grace note, getting much closer to the timing of a real E doubling. You can see here we have a 16th note E we're landing on before firing that F grace note to a longer dotted eighth note E. Again, this is to make sure that we can land on an E and still get a crispy F grace note. Sometimes when folks start heading down to that E and try to separate it quickly, the F actually opens up. I want to see if we can make sure we can get to a good short E and still get a crispy little F grace note in it. Let's see what happens. In the next measure, all we're doing is adding that G grace note back in as best you can, trying to keep those two grace notes the same length, separated with enough time that you can hear that E, but that we're not evenly separating them, especially not at this tempo. Let's give it a go with the metronome at 62 here. See what happens. And then finally, the last measure of this exercise just has them written out as E doublings, but the length of these notes is not the same. In fact, I have a whole poster right here and a link to the document where you can learn all about this, and I talk about all the timing in this. There are two different kinds of grace notes. There are grace notes used for separation and emphasis, and there's grace notes we want to hear. I call those grace notes sounding tones. So in an E doubling, when written out completely, the G grace note is about that long. That E grace note is about this long, and that F grace note's about that long. 
So we want to spend more time on the E than the G or the F grace note, but not so long that it's just bisecting the note into two equal long parts. We still want a short E, but it's not as short as the grace notes. Again, check out that video. I go into more detail there, and it might help your understanding of not only the E doubling, but a bunch of other doublings. In addition to this lovely poster here, I also have other bagpipe merch like mugs and t-shirts and hats. So go check it out and let the world know that you command your bagpipe. So let's turn that metronome back on. Try this final bar. If you start adding this improving your E doublings exercise to the beginning of your practice sessions, it won't take long before you find your E doublings are really, really starting to get better, crisper, cleaner, and uh, yeah, what you want them to be. I wanted to add in, given the top hand nature of this ornament, this might be the most important exercise to do on your pipes once you have it under control on your practice channel. Because when you're on your pipe, you have to be squeezing the bag with your top hand. This could be a great way to start learning how to really disconnect the squeezing energy your arm is providing from the tension in your hand, which should be kind of disconnected. That might be a little weird for the beginning piper, but this exercise may well help you do that. If you wanted to look at a video that would improve all of your doublings, check out this guy right here. And if you just want to improve the overall fluidity of your finger work, check out that video right here. I'm Matt Willis, everybody, and until next time, cheers.